Hello guys, Damodoc82 here, and uh, we are here for the second part of the uh, tank tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be working on making a uh, self-propelled gun, which is essentially a, a tank destroyer. Now, just to let you guys know, this is the same build that I used from the last video. Uh, the main difference is I pulled off the engine, I pulled off all the supplies, the ammo, all that crap, and uh, the weapon that we had mounted on the front. All that was basically for demonstration purposes for you guys' benefit. So this time we're going to be uh, building an entire tank destroyer, and when I go to do the actual hull parts of it, I'm probably just going to do it in time lapse because otherwise it would probably uh, take a lot longer than I would be comfortable uh, having you guys sit through. So, anyway, let's get started on this. So I'm thinking for this, we'll just have a fairly simple fuel engine. And I'm going to pop it like... Um, right about back here. Then we're going to put that, that, that there. Going to get some carburetors. That gives us about 300 power, give or take. Of course, we can expand this just a little bit more here. And I think that should be a fairly sufficient engine for what we want to do here. Alright, so now I am wanting to start putting a uh, kind of a big slab of heavy armor on the front of this. The whole work will be done separately, but uh, there's a few things that I want to go over while I'm doing this. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this, though, is of course to protect the tank itself, but uh, also so I can show you guys how to create a proper spall liner. Now don't worry about the front of the tank being weighed down right now, that's perfectly fine. We'll come to that problem here in a while. Alright, so basically what happens with Hesh and Heat is uh, it's probably going to just permeate these first two layers without too much of a hassle. But when it gets to this layer, it's going to encounter this air gap here. And if it's Hesh, Hesh takes the armor class of the last uh, block, it, or I'm sorry, AP of the last block it passes through, which is why we've got this stone layer here. And uh, after the shockwave from the Hesh passes through the stone layer, it's just going to a bunch of uh, low AP frags all up against this uh, slab of heavy armor here, so it's probably not going to do much. Uh, the air gap is going to uh, work very similarly for the uh, heat shells as well. So yeah, this is just to make it, uh, well, tanky. So now that we've got all that in place, um, I think I want to expand the AI just a little bit here because I imagine we're going to need some detection equipment. I always like to go with wireless snoopers because they, they're very good and you, you don't have to necessarily have them exposed to anything for them to work. You can just have them happily sit inside your vehicle and uh, they'll do de detection all day without too much hassle. Now, I might need to go back and change the amount of processors that we'll actually need at some point, but uh, we'll just leave that for now, it's fine. Alright, so 
I want to get more heavy armor. And we are going to... Actually, let's bring that back to about here. We're just going to try to protect this AI area as best we can. Actually, it'd probably be more efficient if I... Yeah. Also, just some tips. Um, whenever building a, a vehicle out of pretty much anything, it's always advisable to use the largest blocks possible. That way, uh, the larger blocks, they have more hit points. Also, um, it takes less processing power for your computer overall. Okay, so I think I want to go with uh, an advanced cannon system for this. And I think I want to do a top layer of this out of just regular plain old metal. We're gonna have it like so. Alright, so for this inner bit here, I'm gonna go with heavy armor once again. Uh, early game, you could probably use like um, regular uh, metal instead. But later on, after that, you might want to start upgrading your stuff to a uh, heavy. Okay. So, now I need to figure out how I want to put an APS in here. I think that engine might have to change location. So, yeah, let's just grab a prefab of it. Okay, still trying to learn this new UI. I'm not too crazy about it right now, to be honest with you guys. Okay. So yeah, we're just gonna put this guy in the front. Should be fine up there. We're just going to move this back on out. And we don't need that anymore. Okay. I think I'm gonna go for like a. Mm, I'm taking a 400 millimeter, 4 meter shell. Yeah. Okay, so. There's that. Again, I'm not trying to get this thing to win any beauty contests or anything. This is just a, a setup that I'm doing for you guys here on camera. Alright, so we're going to set this up for 400 millimeter, like so. And let's see here, let's go ahead and put the ammo customizer. I think right about here. And for this shell, I'm just going to go like a pure HE. 
Actually, let's do hollow point HE just to make sure that it explodes. And we're going to have that at 400 millimeter. There we go. That's not too bad explosive damage. Uh, you probably might want to use a more optimized shell for this. Again, this is just going to be like for demonstration purposes. Anyway. So let's get our auto loaders. And we're going to go with four meter clips, like so, and like so. I probably should have put mirror mode on that, but whatever. Okay. There. And we'll run the cooling units along here. They can go up front a little bit like that. some ammunition up here. And we're just going to give it just a little bit of armor like that. Because plunging fire is a thing. Now the inner bits here that I'm working on right now, um, this is just to stop any catastrophic blowouts from completely gutting the inside of the tank should the ammo get touched off. So that's why I'm not using full blocks for that. our barrels and usually with these self-propelled guns you want to give your uh, gun the widest firing arc possible it just makes it easier for it to acquire targets that way Probably will need a bit of resource storage. And fuel. Probably won't need a whole hell of a lot. That should actually probably get us by. I'll go ahead and set that gun up to start accepting shells from that. That's not a whole lot of fire rate that we're getting here. So let's try doubling up these auto loaders.
Let's see here. Resources. Still need... Some containers like this. There we go. And I think I'm going to put... I hate that. Because it's like right where I'm used to having the heavy armor at. Anyway. I'm going to build a, another kind of dividing area in case the uh, clips get touched off. Alright. So let's see what kind of accuracy this barrel will give us. Uh, I think we can do a little bit better. Let's try slapping another one on there. Point two one? Yeah, that's fine. I think I could live with that. So I want to add some detection equipment. here will do. And let's see here. Over here I want to grab our snooper a laser range finder. Put that right about there. And then we're going to go back to AI. We're going to grab ourselves the wireless receivers. We're going to put one of those there and one of those there. Good. Now then, let's see here. Let's go into decorations. We're going to grab the metal portholes. Now the idea of this is so we will have our sensors armored up. And we'll put some slopes like that in that to make it look a little more interesting. And that's pretty much all we want this to do is just kind of cover you know, the uh, sensors. That's about it. Okay, so that's good. Also, this is kind of nice because it'll give our autoloaders down here just a little more protection. Okay, so we still need to be able to give the AI control of this weapon. So we'll put our controller there and take the mirror mode off for a moment so we can stick. Oh, okay, there it's fell safe. Again, still trying to get used to this crap. All right, so we have ammo storage, we have AI, we have fuel. Engine. What else do we need? I think that's about all we need as far as function wise goes. So, before I start going to town making this thing look somewhat decent, uh, let's go ahead and get yeah, God Mode still on for it. And I'm going to show you guys how to bring this up out of the dirt like that. So we're going to go to wheel configuration. Uh, we're going to increase the spring force. And we're going to copy that shit to all wheels. You can also adjust the spring link just a little bit up here too. And now you can see it's sitting pretty level now. 
And let's see here, how are we doing on volume for this thing? Yeah, that's not even near 2,000 volume yet. Anyway, now that we have something somewhat functional here, uh, I'm going to spawn in a Taipan. Just to make sure this works correctly. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn it off because we're just checking to make sure that the weapon works correctly. And here we go. We'll turn the AI back on for this. Oh yeah, that's doing great. So some of the advantages of building a system like this is you can have substantially larger shells being fed into the gun than you would with say a turret setup like you would see on a traditional tank. But this kind of setup right here means that you can essentially make it, uh, the shells come out of it as long as you're comfortable with. So let's try pop, plopping down something from the Onyx watch just to test. And we'll do the same thing as last time. And we'll turn off the movement and the weapons. Again, just for testing purposes to make sure this is working right. As you can see, the tank is correctly facing towards its target. There we go. That's doing pretty well, I think. All right. So we know that works for sure. So let's uh, destroy the enemy vehicles. All right, so I'm gonna shut this guy off for a second. Now, the next part I wanna do is the armor for the sides of the vehicle. So we're gonna go into here, we're gonna go grab stone. And I want to do the slopes. Uh, it'll essentially be like this ball liner that we have in here. Actually, I think I'll expand that just one more like that. So let's do something like this. Okay, so the reason why I did it this way is so uh, the spall liner... Oh, I just realized I had that pointing the wrong goddamn way. Sorry about that, folks. Let me redo this. So the reason why I'm doing it this way is you want to make sure that that gap is as large as you can make it. Because even these little points here, uh, there is a chance that Hesh will still bounce or be able to go through it. So we want to try to minimize the number of those points as much as possible. Alternatively, I could like do it with these all the way across, but again, this is just something for teaching purposes, so yeah, nothing to worry about there. Okay, and once we have that put on there, we're going to clad the outside of this with metal.
now we should have some pretty good armor. This will make this thing almost nine vulnerable to Hessian heat. So I'm going to uh, do a time lapse to finish off the rest of the vehicle. So be right back.
All right, guys. So here's the finished product. I wasn't trying to make it too crazy. Um, just wanted to keep it simple for you guys. Uh, something like this would probably do pretty well. Uh, trying to get that volume underneath 2K was kind of a problem, though I do believe in current Ashes of the Empire that number might have been bumped up to 2,500 cubic meters that you can use, but I just went with 2,000 just to be safe. So let's have Rambot jump off of that. And we're going to save this guy. And let's turn off God Mode for it. I'm going to get Rambot nice and far from here. Now we're going to go in here. We're going to bring us in a type in and spawn it in. Look at that. Getting some good hits there. Look at that. Like three or four shots. Killed the type in. I'd call that pretty good. And a lot of the damage right there, that's pretty negligible. Now let's see here, the cost of 40k materials, that shouldn't be too hard to get in ashes. Probably not something I would use as a starter unit, although if you retetris a few things around you could probably get this to fit into a, a uh, much smaller hull. Again, this a lot of this is just built for de demonstration purposes, so you guys can kind of see how I go about doing it. Um, let's have a look at the uh, insides of this real quick. So yeah, just tried to get as many auto loaders in here as I could so it would match the number of uh, amount of cooling that I have here. It seemed like it stayed pretty accurate after that first uh, shell came out. So I think we are probably okay with the amount of shock absorbers. Well, I probably could exchange these guys out for the four meter ones now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, with shock absorbers, the longer they are, the better. At least that's what I have noticed. Um, but this isn't exactly a APS tutorial, which is something I may consider doing here in the very near future. But yeah. So there you guys have it. A self-propelled gun. And I just realized that this might need like a couple of uh, repair bots, so let's go ahead and pop this on there while I'm thinking about it. And a repair tentacle, because why the hell not? Because sometimes those past, or, or the, uh, those could be extremely handy so you can do some repair work out in the field. So let's watch it kill uh, one more type hand here and then we'll call it a video. As you can see, it's keeping up pretty good with the movement speed on this thing, being able to pivot in place like this. And as you can also see, it's doing a very good job of trying to keep its distance from the target. Yeah, those shells are 
do and basically piss all of this. Now, how much is a Taipan? Yeah, it's a little less than, or I'm sorry, a little more than half the cost of that thing. But still, I, I think something like this could be potentially pretty useful in many parts of the uh, Ashes of the Empire campaign. So let's uh, go ahead and end the video here. Uh, next time, I'm going to be going over building an actual tank where we have a rotatable turret and all the other goodness that comes with uh, making tanks. So, anyway, um, the tank destroy here, that will be made available on the workshop upon the release of this video, and I will leave a, um, a link in the description for you guys so that you can be able to download it and tinker with it yourself. So with all that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching. This has been Damodoc82. Uh, Y'all have yourselves a hell of a day, and keep your hammer high. Later.